Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Huanyuo dual motor electric standing desk. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon, and if you use that link it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So this is a frame for a standing desk, so you do need to supply your own desktop surface for it. So there are many options. You can buy pre-made ones, you can make one yourself, you could get a piece of butcher block countertop would make a nice desk surface. You may already have a regular desk surface that you can adapt to this. You could maybe use a piece of countertop. There are many options for a surface for this. Now the depth of the frame on top is 19.7 inches and then the depth of the feet is 25.2 inches. This is adjustable side to side and that goes from 42.1 to 69.2 inches this way. So that width you'll lock in based upon the width of your surface, but then the height is adjustable from 28.3 to 47.2. So that will allow you to sit at the desk or stand at the desk and adjust between the two. So I'm going to open this up and we'll take a look at it as best we can on my bench, but eventually we'll head away from the bench to get it assembled. Now I'm going to be very careful when I open this with my knife because I don't know what's under here. So I'm just barely going to score that tape. Okay, so it looked like we have foam under there. Pull that out. Here we have the instruction manual. Let's take a quick look at it. So here we have the specs. Max load on this is 265 pounds. And here are the dimensions. And there's quite a range of sizes you can use on this for your desk surface. And this talks about the different hardware and such. This has a cable management tray and a controller. So it has presets on it for different heights. And then we have the assembly instructions. So this is a dual motor adjustable desk. So it should have good power and nice even adjustability when you move it up and down. So here's just an overview of the instructions, what it looks like. This talks about using the controller. So you can have three different saved height settings. So you might have a sitting and a standing and some other saved setting. And here's some settings like changing the units, collision detection and resetting. Here's some codes, okay? So this has a cable tray. I think that's here. Looks like this would get bent to mount under the desk. I'll keep that in the bag so it doesn't get scratched. And here we have all the different parts. So I don't think I'm going to pull all of these out onto my bench here. Let's get started assembling this. I'm going to speed through a lot of this, but I will stop every once in a while and give notes on what I'm putting together. Okay, so I have a corner over here where I can build my desk. So first I'll get all the pieces out. Okay, so here I have the parts laid out. Now I like that they're labeled on the bags instead of having the labels on the parts themselves because then you don't have to peel stickers off. We also have these bags of hardware. We have a hex key in here and some hex screws. So the first thing I'm going to do is connect the crossbars to the desk legs. Okay, so I have those parts on. Now I didn't tighten them down all the way. There's a little bit of movement in them and I'll tighten them all down as I get things further assembled. Now it wants us to attach the side plates to the desk legs. And you want to make sure you have this in the correct orientation as shown in the instructions. It shows you the orientation they go. It also shows you the orientation that's incorrect. So you can make sure to put them on the correct way. Now we're going to attach the rubber grommets. So the desk surface will fit on top of here and on top of here. And it has these rubber grommets that go on there to cushion between the frame and your desk surface. All of those holes are oblong, so if you have any round holes, it means something's on incorrectly. So next I need to position these on top of the work surface, so I'm going to rearrange things here. Okay, so I have my desk surface here, and I made this myself. This is two layers of two foot by four foot MDF, or medium density fiber board. I glued them together, and I rounded over the edge and painted it. So as this is right now, this weighs just under 45 pounds. Now this is an inch and a half thick. You don't have to have a desk surface this thick. I just like the look of a thick desk. So I'm going to put the leg sections on there, and I'll put the connecting bars between them. There was some tape on the leg, I removed that, and these slots need to be inwards. So now we need to center it on the desk surface. There are many different ways you can do this. I'm going to show the way I'm going to do it. So first I'm going to move the frame all the way to one end. It's a curved end, so I'm going to use a square to make sure I have it lined up nicely. So this is even with the edge of the desk. I'm going to measure from here to the edge of the desk. That was four and three eighths. So I'll divide that by two. So that'll be two and three sixteenths. So I can certainly continue to use my tape measure, but I have this carpenter square. So I'm going to set this to two and three sixteenths and I'll lock that in. This way I don't have to look at the ruler anymore. The distance from this face to this face is two and three sixteenths. And this says four and five, but I just measured one, two and three sixteenths. So this is the offset I want from the desk frame to the edge of the desk. So to make it evenly spaced, 
I'm going to also pull the legs out towards this edge and space it out that even amount so we have 2 and 3 sixteenths from the front and then 2 and 3 sixteenths from the side. I need to take a step back and tighten down the bolts on the legs before I position this and tighten the crossbars, but it's good to do it right here on the desk surface so I know it's flat to the desk surface. So I need to pull these apart a little bit, tighten them down, and I'll slide it back together. Okay, so I got those bolts all tightened down. I'm going to do one thing that's not in the instructions. I'm going to mark the center of these crossbars here. They're going to slide into each side of these, and I'd like to have an even amount on either side. So if I mark the center, I can easily measure that. I didn't do that with high precision. It's pretty approximate. So now I'm going to put this back together and start centering it again. I switched out my carpenter square for this Craig multi-mark. My carpenter square was slipping, but I have the same thing here. I have an offset from here to here with two and three sixteenths inches. Now there's two holes here that we're going to put screws in to tighten these crossbars down. And you want to make sure that these are not extended so far that both screws don't go into the crossbars. Now this is a short desk, so it's not really an issue, but if you have a longer desk, that's something to look out for. Okay, so I have it where I want it. So I'm going to lock that in with these eight screws. Now I put that dot on there and I just eyeballed it centered on there. So I'll get these tightened down. So now we're going to attach the frame to the top with these screws. You can use a screwdriver. I'm going to use a drill. Now for some surfaces you might need to pre-drill. I'm going to try just driving the screws in and the screws are going to go in all the locations where you put the rubber grommets. So there will be 12 screws total. Now it says to tighten two screws in opposite corners and then put the remaining screws in. So I position the screws in the middle of the grommet and I want to make sure I don't tighten them down too tight. Some tops can move, especially wooden tops, and you want to allow for that wood movement, so you don't want to overcompress those grommets. Next, we want to install the cable management tray. So these sides are perforated. We want to fold these. Now, if you fold these back and forth, I can pretty much guarantee they're gonna break, so you want to try and do it in one shot. So let's see how this folds. Not too bad. I have this scrap block of wood here I'm just going to hold up against here and use it to help me bend this in place. It's looking pretty good. I can use a square to see if it's square, although this does not have to be perfectly square. So now I want to fold these up. First, I'm going to fold these down. That's pretty good. And now I'll fold these up. Now these I do want as close to 90 as I can get them. Sometimes you need to overbend them just a little bit, and then they will spring back to 90. So probably right about there. Now we can mount this up on the desk. So in the instructions, they show this in the middle of the desk, so that's where I'll put it. It might be possible to also mount this in a different position, but I'll go with what the instructions are doing. So I'll use a ruler to get this centered. Next we have the storage hooks. So the instructions are showing installing these on the ends. Now these could be installed anywhere. Again, I'll just install these how the instructions are showing. I may move these later. Next we'll mount the control panel along the front edge. So I have the rounded edge. I'm probably going to use my square or something to make this bottom edge of this that's rounded flush with the edge of the desk. And I just realized I used the wrong screws to put the tray on. I was supposed to use the black screws and I used the silver screws. Okay, the next step is attaching the legs. And you'll notice we didn't attach those earlier because we're bending over here and we would have run into them a hundred times. So we have most of the stuff done on the bottom so we can attach those now. Let's take a little close up look of these legs. So this is metal and you can see how thick the metal is here. This is very durable, heavy metal. And then we have pads on the ends that thread in. So you can see that there. And the fit and finish on this has been excellent. There is a little bit of back and forth movement on these before you tighten them down. So as I tighten them, I'm going to press them towards the outside to make sure they're not twisted. 
So this did come with a bag of spare parts with two machine screws, two wood screws, and two grommets. So now we're ready to wire everything up. So this came with a transformer to power it. And output on this is 29 volts at 2 amps. It also came with this extension cable. I don't know if we're going to need it since I have a narrow desk. But if you have a longer desk, this is available. So we're going to plug each side into the controller. And we're going to plug power into the controller. Now the instructions has some suggestions for routing the cables. And it comes with these cable management clips. Okay, so I have those routed. I'm not going to put the power connector on it until I flip it over. I don't want it dangling down. But let's get a close-up of some of the work I did. Okay, so here we have the controller. You can see the connectors are plugged in the back. The power is going to go over here. I ran the wire from the far side over here, and it just barely reached. But I think this is going to work. If it didn't, I'd have to use that extension cable. And then this one here, I kind of bundled up here, and I twisty-tied these two together. Now I can use maybe one of those other cable things to stick this somewhere, but I'll figure that out later. Sometimes it can help to put the wires in place and find out where they're hanging down and then adjust them later. So here you can see where I attach it to the desk with the tabs. We have the grommets in there and this isn't incredibly tight. I just snugged it up enough to hold, but I don't want to smash those too much. Then we have the motors here and here on both sides. We have the hooks here. You could use those to maybe hang headphones or something. And here we have the tray. So if you have a computer that has a transformer or something, you could put that in there, or you could put a power strip or other things in there. You could potentially even put some computers in there. So now I'll get this flipped over and we'll test out the functionality of it. Okay, so I got this flipped over. I had someone help me. It has a lot of heft to it. So I plugged it in. The first thing we need to do is reset it. So we'll go over here to the controls and we'll hold down on the down button until it says RES. And we'll continue holding down. And this will lower it to the lowest position then it will raise it up just a little bit, and now we're done. So now we can adjust the height with these buttons. So I'll press up. That's raising the desk. So if we like this height and want to save it, we'll short press the S button, then we'll press a number. So I'll do that at one. Now I'll adjust the desk. and I'll press one, it will automatically lower to the one position. So I'll lower this all the way. And this is currently showing metric, so I'm going to hold down the S button. And then I'll press S to UN for units, and I'll press S to select it, and I'll switch from SI to IN, and then I'll press S to save my choice. So now we're at 28.3, and the bottom of the desk is at 28.3. So let's raise this all the way up. And this is very quiet. And you can hear it, but it's very, very quiet. Now we're at the maximum height, it says 47.2. And that looks here, we're at about 47 and a quarter. So that seems pretty accurate. So for a standing desk height, I'd probably want that a little lower. Maybe about like that. What I would do is set this to a height, store it, try it, and then adjust it as you see fit. So I'll hit S2. So if I want sitting mode, I'll hit one. And if I want standing mode, I'll hit two. So this is automatic. You don't have to hold it down for the settings. So as such, it has a collision detection sensitivity. So you can change that in the settings. So overall, I'd say that was fairly easy to assemble. The hardest part is that I was filming it. If you're not filming it, it'll make it a little bit simpler. Now there are a couple different things like I'd put the wrong screws in and I left that in here because I wanted to show my actual experience. I could have changed it out and edited it or something, but I wanted to show you actually how it went together for me. And I would say it went very, very smooth. Now there is a lot of different configurability on here as far as to how far apart you put the legs or how you center it or where you put the control or the hooks. So it's nice having a carpenter square or a Craig multi-mark or some kind of thing to do those measurements. Now it has that little cage on the bottom that we can put things in, but you could also attach a regular power strip or other accessories to the bottom of the desk or even the top. You could drill a hole in it for a grommet and run wires through it or mount a monitor mount. 
So I'm going to get some equipment on here and set it up so you can see what it looks like as an actual computer desk. So that'll be a little bit, so I'll just cut to when I have that ready. Okay, so I have a computer set up on the desk now. I'm guessing most people's desks won't be this clean. I have a laptop on a laptop stand. You could also have a monitor here. Now with a monitor, you could just set it on the surface or you could mount it to an arm so it would be adjustable. Now with this four foot wide desk, I have plenty of room on either side to put more things and I have plenty of depth here at two feet. Of course, you could go with a wider desk. You might have a printer on it or multiple monitors, things like that. So this is the sitting mode here. So I could type on this while sitting. And then if I want to vary things, I can stand. So I'll hit two. I have that set to my standing preference. So it will automatically rise to the standing position. And here I can type at this level. So if you had an adjustable monitor, you could maybe raise that up or down depending on if you're sitting or standing. I can see it at this level, but I might want to tilt it back just a little bit. So on this side hook, I have a pair of headphones. They fit on there nicely. Now you can mount these wherever you want. I put these on the end, but you could just as easily mount them on the front side of the desk. Now, if we look underneath here, we have that tray for the wires. So we can see this one wire here and my outlet is above the desk. Typically outlets would be below the desk, but that is for a power strip. So I have a power strip in here and then I have the desk and my laptop plugged in here. This other black wires for something else. So I don't have any other wires hanging down here. So you could put those little wire ties it comes with or use other wire management here to keep a really clean look under this desk. Now I have these wires going across here and they weren't really hanging down much, but I just threw a rubber band around these four screws to kind of support them. So it's holding them up just a little bit, although they were only hanging down about uh, three quarters of an inch or so. So that's the Huanyo dual motor adjustable standing desk. I really like the build quality of this. The fit and finish of it is excellent. The metal is sturdy, it's nice and heavy. If I try and wiggle this, it barely moves. This was very easy to put together. Instructions were very clear. Now this does not come with the desk surface. That's my preferred way to set up a desk like this. So you can choose the surface size exactly to fit your needs. And this desk is adjustable so it can work with many different size work surfaces. I really like adjustable desks because you can vary your position. If you get tired of sitting, you can stand. This could also be nice if you're in a place where multiple people are using the desk. Each person could have a different setting so you can adjust it for individual preferences. So if you're looking for an adjustable bench with great build quality, I think this is a great option. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.